The project has ballooned in price. It's, you know, it's late on delivery. We're incurring fines from the DEC. And, you know, the implications of what this project means for the community are going to be felt for decades to come. We're going to be paying for it over the next 20 years at least. And, you know, if we get it right, then there are a lot of opportunities that our community can, can enjoy. And if we get it wrong, then it's just going to be another chapter in the long saga that has really characterized this facility over the decades. Um, the reason why I started focusing on the sewage treatment plant when I took office is because it was one of the things that came up the most when I was talking to people last year. And it wasn't something that people highlighted as, as a top issue for them. It was something that so very many people said in passing. They said to me, what the heck is going on with the sewage treatment plant? And so when I took office, I started asking questions, started, you know, talking to people who have worked there for a long time, people who've been um, involved with the facility for a long time. And I started to learn that there's actually a, uh, you know, privatization plan that they were embarking on that, that wasn't really being subjected to public scrutiny. And I feel like a decision that big that has implications for so many people in our community needs to be aired out in the public. The public has a right to know exactly what's going on, what the arguments for and against it are, and to see the, the information, see the data that, that backs up those arguments. And so that's been, that's been what I've been working on, you know, in a big way since I took office. Well, I'm still waiting to get more information on the sewage treatment plant. We're still waiting for everybody to bring back their, um, their findings, and uh, we should make a decision maybe next month. I'm hoping we can make a decision there, but I'm still weighing everything up to figure out which way my vote will be on it. Now, is it more for you a decision on which would be the best private operator, or are you still questioning whether or not it should go private at all? I'm still questioning whether it should go private at all. I'm still not convinced it should be private. Um, like I said, still gathering information on it. I, as a resident, felt as if I was not afforded access to the process. I think there were a lot of moving parts that I couldn't access by going to the website. Um, we know there was a process to uh, privatize the management. There was a, an RFP. Um, but we had no access. We didn't know what was happening. But I think the underlying issue is that there have been uh, problems that weren't properly addressed. And when questioned, again, we were not given information to feel as if our rates would not change. We were not given information to even understand how the concerns, I think we saw an article about the FEC imposing fines. How are we addressing those concerns? And I think, again, transparency is key. I do also know that um, I support fair wages. I support um, union services. And I think project labor agreements and agreements that structure timelines and expected goals and endpoints would probably have assisted us in ensuring that some of the goals and deadlines were achieved. I don't have all the information I need to make that final decision. I'm learning. Um, I'm coming into this, like I said, as a resident, and I say what everybody else says, this stinks, how could this possibly happen? Just broad-based, just unrest with the whole situation. So I'm like everybody else, I'm not happy with it either. I also understand that we have to start here and move forward, <clears throat> that we cannot just, you know, just. We have to learn from the past, but we can't dwell on it. We got to move forward with that. That being said, the, one, the biggest concern I have is to make a, a, a decision. It's not going to be totally based on jobs and, and, and other factors, but that's a consideration in what I've, I've talked to people, is that I think the first round failed to privatize. I think that the consideration of the people that work there, most of those people, 99% of those people, this, none of this is their fault. They're great workers. They, they live in this community. They, they, they provide for this community. So I want to make sure that there's, if we were to privatize, that the people that work there are either taken care of or they're given due preference for a new position or whatever. And like I said, that wouldn't be the final, my final decision making point, but it's a big one. I want to know what's going to happen to those people that this had nothing, nothing to do because there's a lot of people that work there. Um, but to say straight up, not I'm just ga gathering all that information 
and I don't want to say something that I would be like, well, man, why did I say that without really understanding? I'm learning more and more. Um, there's a guy right down here on Gate Street that's like an expert. I don't know if he's a professionally an expert or he just, he's, just been <laughs> he's just been on it since day one. But I'm going to sit with some of my constituents too with that, that seem to understand or have a passion for and just get their take on it. Um, as my take would be just as a regular regular resident. But straight up prioritization right this time, I'm not I'm not 100% sure. I think they made the right decision to hold off on that decision and to, to, to not go with it the first round because there wasn't enough information. But back to my context, I want the context for everything and I'm going to do what's best for the ratepayers. To me, that's a bipartisan issue. How can we move forward and take care of the obligations of the city and the village of Johnson City, but also take care of the people? We can't just saddle them with with crazy increased costs when it wasn't their fault either. Um, but also understand that somehow, some way, whether it's grants or whether there's any legal litigation that's still out there, I'm not sure. But the obligations have to be taken care of in a, in a fiscally responsible way while keeping the taxpayer, rate payer, I should say, in that context um, in mind. I remember back in 2000, my first year on city council, that was a disaster. A lot of finger pointing has been going on uh, for a lot of years, it was neglected, and then when it was done, it wasn't done properly, wasted millions of dollars. I'm not a lawyer. I don't see the minutes of the Joint Sewage Treatment Plan meetings anymore, but it's a disaster. You can't really blame the mayors, like J.C., Binghamton, uh, Endicott. It's, it's an independent body. <sighs> Sometimes there isn't a, a perfect solution to something like that. Uh, for an interview like this, it would just take me too long to go into it. It's just, it's such a complicated issue that I could give you a couple of sentences, but it really wouldn't really mean anything. It's gotcha. Well, can I ask just, have you made up your mind on whether or not you think privatization is a good idea? Well, yeah, we have to, you have to look at the numbers. Um, uh, I've been asked that in the radio interview. You have to run the numbers. Now, everybody thinks that privatization is selling the plant. It's not. It's just hiring a company to run it, i.e. if I hired a manager to run my store. Well, he doesn't own the store. He works for me. Same for that. Those people would work for the municipalities that own the joint sewage treatment plant. And if you run the numbers and the numbers are favorable, then take a good hard look at it. It's all about numbers and money. It's nothing personal. It's not about autonomy. It's not about anything. It's about simple dollars and cents and how much we can save the people that use the joint sewage treatment plant. I'd need to study that issue more. I don't really have a position on it right now in terms of whether it should stay uh, public or go private. I have two concerns with regard to the, the sewage treatment plant. Uh, obviously, there's been uh, a number of issues and perhaps continues to be issues with it in terms of the construction, uh, excessive charges and funding, et cetera. But my two concerns are one, the quality of the water and the river, the Susquehanna River. I mean, it's one of the great rivers of the United States. And uh, I really think that uh, it's an important aspect of our, of our life and adds to our community here. But the second concern is what is the impact going to be on the ratepayers, uh, the taxpayers in the city and the, uh, all the residents who are paying very high already uh, water and sewer bills. So that's going to be the, you know, at the forefront of any decision that I would make. But again, I need to gather more information, study it, look for input from my constituents about their thoughts on it, and then make a, make a decision based on all that. As far as the sewage treatment plant, uh, quite frankly, I think there's been mismanagement there basically since its inception. So I think it's unfair to put the sole blame on the current administration. Um, that being said, I think there's been a, a lack of transparency on much of what's going on or, or has been going on for years. In terms of do I have enough information to make a decision at this point about privatization, uh, I, I think the better answer is the lack of information gives me a solid answer as to how I would feel about that, and that is to not privatize at this moment. Um, we don't know if the plant is 100% operational today. Uh, we don't know the ins and outs of that plant. And, and more importantly to me, uh, I'm a labor man myself. Uh, I belong to a union. Uh, I'm very worried about my brothers and sisters who are working in that plant having dangerous amounts of chemicals that they're exposed to that have not been uh, fixed in the proper manner and still having uh, parts of the plant that are considered very dangerous. So uh, right now, I think being that it's a municipal service, uh, it should be in the hands of the municipalities and we need to work as an entire community uh, to figure out solutions to not only make this plant safe and operational, but also to figure out the cost 
of operation and how we're going to you know, develop a, a, a plan for all ratepayers uh, to benefit from this. The sewage treatment plant, people keep politicizing the whole sewage treatment plant. And I mean, to the extent where it's just confusing to the public. I personally think that I'm, I'm happy that we now have a state-of-the-art sewage treatment plant. We're not going to have to worry about it falling apart anymore. And it's, if it's o over budget and if it's o over schedule, I would like to see a report exactly how much it was supposed to be and how much it is. But even if it is over budget and over schedule, it doesn't mean that that is anybody's fault or anybody needs to be blamed. I mean, that's just the way that it that it happened and that's just how much it costs. So, um, you know, we have to figure out how to pay for it without getting a huge increase in our sewage, our bills. The mayor says he's not going to increase this year. I, I love that. And then it gives us a year to really figure it out, get the litigation done and really figure out how much we're all going to have to pay for it. As far as the privatization goes, I would like to see a document which is going to show us how much the privatization costs per year, and how much we would pay if it didn't privatize. I would like to see what's going to happen to the employees that are there. I would like to see what's going to happen to their pensions. I don't necessarily think that, that it's a, the best way to go, but I don't know. I'd, I'd like to see what other cities have done. I know that Cortland went private. And then they took it back because they didn't, they didn't, it didn't go well for them. But that doesn't mean that it that it's, hasn't gone great for other cities. So I would like to see the city of Binghamton, before we go ahead and do that, I would like to see a study of what other cities have done and how it's gone for them. At the end of the day, um, rate payers come first. And for me to be able to make an informed decision, I do need more information. Um, it would be a decision that's based on facts. It will not be based on rumors or opinions that just seem to be thrown out there. And, and again, at the end of the day, it's really about the ratepayers. From the information that I have gathered from attending some city council meetings and reading uh, articles about what's happening, I do not believe that privatization benefits the community. I think that if we keep it a public publicly managed entity. It gives more accountability to the public. Uh, also, a private company is not, uh, I, I worry that a private company would care more about profits, cutting costs um, rather than investing. So using local labor, unionized labor, um, I think that there's, you know, one of the companies that put in a bid for uh, managing the plant is the one that has been costing taxpayers a ton of money. It's behind schedule. It's over budget. Uh, and I just, I, I worry about the lack of accountability that a private company would bring. Uh, I also don't agree with the way that the privatization plan was uh, introduced. So it, it appears to be kind of behind closed doors, which I I don't think that's how government should be run. I think uh, it should be transparent. And I, I don't believe that most of the residents whose sewer bills are likely to go up, if put in a position where they could make that decision, I don't believe that they would vote to privatize the plant. I think what's happening in the sewage plant is really not good. Um, I feel like that it shouldn't be privatized and we should keep it um, county, county-wise, um, especially for the city workers that are working there now. Um, I know there was a neighboring um, county that did privatize their sewage plant and didn't work out so well for them. So I think that we should probably like look into them and what happened with that situation and kind of follow their lead and um, just keep it um, in the community.